It's Friday, March 11th, 2011, and today we're going to be taking a look at Fedora 15 Alpha 1. Yes, you heard me correctly. This may look like the GNOME 3 Beta 1 first look video. However, I've not gotten to that point yet. This is the Fedora 15 Alpha because Fedora 15 by default is going to be using GNOME 3 or GNOME Shell. Now, some of the key features of this newer version of Fedora include, as I mentioned, updated desktop environments. The default, of course, is going to be GNOME 3. There is also going to be the latest version of KDE, KDE 4.6 available, and the newest version of XFCE, which if I remember correctly is still 4.8. Now since the primary new feature of this new version is that GNOME 3 is a new desktop environment, I thought it would be appropriate to just take a quick walkthrough of Fedora 14 Alpha 1's implementation of it. As I am going to be showing you here, this is not the beta version. Right after you install the alpha, you do an update and it takes you to the beta or actually just past the beta. So this is going to be a little bit different. If you'd like to see what the beta looks like, my friend Linux for you and me actually made a video about this a few days ago, so I'll have a link to his video down in the source code below. So go take a look at that. But anyway, let's go ahead and start in the, oh, let's in the upper left-hand corner, just to be consistent here. The upper left-hand corner, we have the activities menu. We can either click on that or we can move our mouse just to the upper left-hand corner and it will open. You see there we went to the open running applications. I've got one running and that is FFmpeg, which is actually doing my screencasting for me. You see here at the bottom, it's got the different workspaces that are available. I can either click on them to switch between them or in a very interesting change of pace, something I wasn't aware of, I can click and drag over to the next one, which feels a lot like some of the mobile devices that we've seen a lot out of lately. Now if you want to manage the open workspaces or the available workspaces in this version of GNOME 3, you come over to the side, there's a plus and minus button. Minus will take away additional ones and plus will add new ones. You have to be on the one you want to remove to actually remove it though. And now you see I hit plus and it'll add quite a few down here at the bottom. I can hit minus to take them all away. I can very quickly and easily add a new one move the item from one desktop over to the next, move it back very easily. It, it doesn't show as well unless you have multiple windows running, so let's go ahead and open Firefox. That gives us a chance to show off some of the new software as well. See here we have Firefox 4.0 Beta 11. I noticed right after installing the alpha on a machine at work it updates to Beta 12. However, since then it updated even again. I think it's on the release candidate now. But if I go back into the activities window, you see I've got two options here now, two items running. I can click and drag one over to the next available desktop. And if I wanted to, I could drag it over to the plus sign and start a third desktop. And you can make this as complex or as simple as you like. Now other than that, moving items around that are currently running, you see here we've got our list of favorite applications over on the right hand side. Terminal is not in there by default, but it shows up because it's running. This is actually kind of similar to the launcher that you see in the new version of Ubuntu's Unity interface, so it's kind of nice to have some consistency at least among the shells. But if you want to see any of the available applications, you can do that one of two ways. You can either click on the Applications button, which will show you all of the applications that are installed. You can come down here and look at the side to view all the different categories. I've noticed with an update, these categories actually end up changing. They added system tools down at the bottom. They added, I think, sound and video, but maybe that only show. They may have changed multimedia to sound and video. I'm not really sure. So it is definitely possible to view just the applications you want pretty easily, pretty quickly. Not too bad at all. Uh, if you have an application list that's long enough that you would actually need to scroll it, the scroll wheel on a mouse will work, so that's pretty awesome. The other way that you can view applications that you've got available is to come up to the search your computer bar. And you'll notice by the default, if I go ahead and just click on activities or move up to it or hit the super key on the keyboard, and I start typing, let's just type cheese for example, C-H, it immediately jumps up to that right hand corner to this search box without having to click on anything. So that's very handy for keyboard users. And you see here keyboard, or when I started typing in cheese, cheese showed up as the first application available. If I hit down and up arrows instead of left and right, because left and right moves over here on the right hand side between the letters that I've typed, Anyway, down and up, we'll change the selected box to whatever you want to select next. And we are back after a bit of a hiatus there, you may not have noticed. Uh, when I tried to open Cheese just a moment ago, this actually crashed the entire interface. I didn't lose any of the work from the live system, so that's a big thumbs up there. However, it does go to show it is still in the alpha phase, so if you do think of trying this out, Definitely don't put it on a production system yet. The machine I've got it on at work is nothing production-wise, so uh, let's go ahead and move on. 
So as I was saying before, if you start typing in the upper right hand corner, it will search through your applications and your preferences to see what you're looking for, to see if it can find something for you. If it can't find what you're looking for though, you can see down here at the bottom you've got Wikipedia and Google. If you click on one of those, it should open up Firefox for you and search for whatever you've typed in. So uh, you can sort of start to see how, if you're a keyboard user, this can be really useful for you because you hit the super key, you start typing whatever you want to find, like this week in Linux, and then hit Google, and I think you might be able to just tab into that or arrow into that one way or another. And there you go, it opens up Firefox and shows you the, the most awesome website on the entire internet, and then we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Other than that, within the activities window, there's only one more thing I think that's probably appropriate to show you. We've gone through the different windowing and everything. Uh, the one last thing would be interacting with this favorites bar. Now if you want to add something to your favorites, you just click on it and then you drag it over to your little bar over here, you add it to the bar, and you're done. If you want to remove something from the bar in much the same way, you click on it and you drag it down here to the remove button, or you can right click on it and say remove from favorites. Alright, let's move through the rest of the interface kind of quickly. Here in the middle we've got the clock that you can't really do anything to other than left or right click on to view your calendar, your date and time settings, and to open the calendar. Other than that, I don't think you can really change anything. You can just view your agenda that's coming up. So that's, it's a whole lot better than it used to be before you couldn't do anything to it. Now you at least have something when you click on it. Moving on, we've got our connection settings. You see we've got our wireless and wired networks. Here we see auto EM1 instead of ETH0. That's actually one of the other big changes they made was changing the way that network devices are named. This says that it's an embedded network device and it's device number one. If it were wireless, I'm not sure exactly what it would be named, but it would probably be EM2. I'm just guessing on that one because I don't have the firmware to make my wireless device work here. Moving on along the list though, we've got the accessibility options here, all of them available and all of them turned off by default. We've got the sound menu, which should be pretty familiar. If you go into sound settings, you see here we've got our sound effects. This is all the traditional GNOME sound interface, and now you can see that where I'm talking. If we go to output and applications, yeah, all of it working appropriately. I'm actually using my blue snowball mic to do this, so it is, again, decently stable for an alpha. You've got your Bluetooth, if you have Bluetooth hardware, very easy to set things up here. That's one of the things I've always liked about Fedora, is how easy they make it to deal with Bluetooth. Anyway, rambling. Uh, you've got your laptop power settings, your power connection info, battery information. You see if I click on that, it'll give all the info on the battery, traditional GNOME stuff. And then you've got your user menu. This is where some of the changes do come in as well. This is sort of like the me menu that's available in Ubuntu at this point, but a little bit different. You see you've got available and busy, you've got your my account, which is a traditional GNOME thing that most people sort of avoid as far as I have seen in the past. You've got the system settings though, which brings up the GNOME control center, and I actually just read something today that said that Ubuntu added a similar if not identical button in their menu that says here are the system settings. Now one of the things about the system settings that has changed, and you may notice it here, there's no screensaver option. Uh, and the power settings are, they're still there, but they're, I don't know, they're changed a little bit. Not a whole lot. But anyway, the screensaver option is sort of missing. Uh, it is enabled by default if you search for it though. So I type in screen, there we go, screensaver. After the first set of updates though, it will be going away, so uh, I don't know. I'm a little bit off on that one. Uh, in addition, after the first set of updates, while I'm thinking about it, minimize and maximize buttons do disappear. The workspace management over here changes to where you've got boxes instead of having the plus and minus button. I don't know. It was a decent upgrade, but there were some major changes made when it went to the beta phase. Moving back to the system menu, though. Lock screen, switch user, log out, suspend, and shut down. These tend to go a little bit wonky in my experience as well. The shutdown option tends to disappear. There's no restart option available, as you can probably see. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, like I said, it's an alpha. There are still some things that are wonky about it, but it is working surprisingly well. By the way, if you're interested in changing the background, you cannot right-click on the background. You can't right-click on the panel. You have to come in here to the system settings. But once you get in there, background, very easy to do. One click. There we go. We've got a bunch of wallpapers available. Pictures, colors, flicker stuff. And then the last bit of the interface to look at before we move on is this bottom bar. You see here we've got several different notification icons that don't actually show up unless you mouse down there, but they do work very smoothly. Like I said, I'm running on open source drivers at the moment. This is an NVIDIA card with the open source Nouveau driver, I think, and it's running very well. However, if I install it locally, it doesn't seem to work yet, so there may still be some bugs to work out. 
Anyway, that's the main portion of GNOME 3 to talk about. Other than that, the rest of the system, there's a lot of new uh, system admin type things, programmer type things available. System and session management has been updated. Instead of using the traditional upstart and sysv init stuff, it's using systemd. If you go back into the terminal, let me just open a new terminal. Sorry about that, my ffmpeg window. So from here, if I type in su to become root, I can type systemctl, and it will show me a bunch of system information different services that are running, the status of it, and all that. And actually, using that same system CTL, you can start and stop services. I believe you can interact with hardware. There's a lot of different things you can do, and from what I've read about it, SystemD is a lot faster and a lot easier to use than SysV in it and Upstart. So it should help with making the system start faster, with interacting with system services making it a little bit easier. So it should be a great change for in the long run. I'm wondering if other distros might be considering moving to this. I don't know. If you know anything about SystemD, definitely talk it up in the comment section below because I've read a little bit, but I definitely have not read enough on it. But other than that, like I said, there are a lot of system admin and uh, programmer type changes that have been made. There is a very quick and easy way to make virtual appliances using a program called Box Grinder. I haven't had a chance to look at that yet. Like I said, upgraded programming tools, programming languages, productivity applications. They've added LibreOffice instead of OpenOffice, but it's not in the default install, not in the live CD. I believe it does come on the DVD, though. And you can always download it and install it from the repositories. They've changed the network device naming, we talked about that a little bit ago. They've added support for a dynamic firewall, again, not 100% sure on what all that's about, but Fedora has always been pretty good on providing firewall options to the end user. You see here we've got preferences, firewall. There we go, this program will help you set up your firewall for your system. If you are a Fedora user, this is definitely a great place to come look to make sure everything is set up appropriately, make sure all of the trusted services you need are allowed, and the ones that you don't need are not allowed. But that is pretty much the primary stuff that's new with this Alpha 1. If there's anything I've missed, definitely let me know in the comments section below. I can add an annotation to the video or something to the source code below. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, I'll have a link to where you can download it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.